Are you looking for an all-in-one software for your company accounting? Let's discover Big Capital, a free open source platform to control your business bookkeeping from invoices and expenses to automating accounting and financial reports. It includes all the features to run smoothly your business, from individual to organizations. That's what we will see in this platform overview. At the moment we are talking, you have two options to run it. Either self-host on your server using Docker, or use a platform like ours to take care of the installation, backup, updates, hosting, and maintenance for you. A cloud version of Big Capital might arrive soon, but currently you have to fill in a request form. To install Big Capital on our platform, go to ls.io and hit login. Then click on Deploy My First Service, search for Big Capital, hit Select, choose between one of the different cloud providers. I will choose Scaleway. You have the choice between different regions, which varies between providers. Choose the CPU and RAM you need and then hit Next. You also have the choice between different level of supports. I will keep the included one and hit Create Service. You receive an email when the installation is finished with the URL of your instance, your username, and a link to find your password. Click here to get the password. Let's click on this button to copy it to the clipboard and access our instance by following the link. Let's enter our email address and paste the password, hit login, and we arrive on the onboarding process to set up our company on Big Capital. For this platform overview, let's say we are a web agency. So web agency, business location, you can put wherever you want. Let's say our land will charge in Euro, language English, fiscal year. You have the choice when you start and end each fiscal year. Let's keep the default January, December and time zone. Let's use my current time zone and then save and continue. And it's setting up our account. While it's doing it, you can see on the bottom left, you have access to blog, community, support, documentation, and the main website of Big Capital. There is also a message here to remember to verify our account, but it's only for the cloud version because it's not required when you self-host it. We have that nice screen appearing, which means everything is ready. Let's go to dashboard. The interface is nice and everything is organized in different categories. So the first one is about what you receive. So in invoices, sales, your customers and payments. Then below it is what you pay with the invoices of your purchase, your vendors and your payments, but outgoing payments. Then financial accounting, where you will have a clear overview of how your business is going and product services and inventory to set up what you sell and what you do. Because this is the first time we are using it, let's set up the different products and services we sell. So first, let's create the different categories. Let's create two simple one, go to new category. Let's name the first one development consulting. You can add a description, but it's optional. Submit. And another one, we'll name it hosting and submit. It's a simple view to keep things organized. The count number is the number of products and services it includes, but because we just created it, it has known. Okay, now let's go back to the home page and go to products and services. Now let's add the different services we sell because we are a service agency. We won't have products, but only services. So new item, you have the choice between a service or inventory for products, which means you can handle stocks here. Let's say React development. I won't add an item code. I will assign it to the category that we just created, so development consulting. Then there are two different options. I sell this item to a customer, which is the case, and I purchase this item from a vendor. This is not the case, I'm doing it myself. But if I was doing some sort of outsourcing, it could be helpful to put it here so I can see the balance between what I sell and the cost it is to me. But let's uncheck it to keep it simple. Selling price, let's say one day of consulting is 1000 euro. The account, it will help you keep your financial report organized. So it can be sales of product income, but us it is sales of service income. We will see later how we can set it up, but the default ones are very accurate, so let's keep it. Tax rate, also, they are the one made by default. It is variableized, which means we have tax on sales. Currently, it's 0%, but if we change the tax on sales settings, it will update automatically everything that is related to this. Description, one day of consulting, inventory accounts, 
We don't have to change it. Let's do save. Now we have our first item. Let's create another one. Again, it's a service. Let's name it website hosting. This time the category is about hosting. This time, let's say I'm selling it for 250 euros, but it cost me maybe 150 euros. So we will be able to calculate the difference of what is our benefit. The account, it is sale of service income and the account for what I purchase it. Cost of goods sold, I think it is correct. Tax rate, let's say tax on purchases, tax on sales, one year of web hosting. And same applies here, then save. For the moment, we just have two items, but if you sell a lot of different things, you have different filters to access your data. You can apply it, make some conditions, do some import, export of data, and filter to see only the ones that are inactive. Now we have defined the different services that we provide. Let's go to sales and inventory, to the contact section, and create a new customer. So we can go to customers to see the list, and hit new customer. Let's say we are selling to a business, but we still need the contact name in this business, the person which we are referring to. Let's say it's John Doe and it's John Doe Corporation. And display name is providing me three different type, either first name, last name, first comma, last name, and the whole name. Customer email, I will be using mile, so big capital at gmail.com. That way I will be able to receive communication that we have between the customers. Phone number, I won't add one. John do.com it needs http but it's a fake website so it's not big importance then because big capital is multi-currency you can choose you you are based for example in euro but your customer is based in usd and you will be able to define the conversion between two but let's keep it to euro for everyone and opening balance we are at zero by default we can set the address of our customer let's say it's in France. I won't fill all the different fields. You can add notes to your customer. Let's save it. Again, same simple view with different filters, different information displayed, but it helps when you have a huge list and need to find easily data. Let's click on our newly created customer and let's add a new transaction. What we want to do is first to create an estimate to provide services and show the price for doing it. First, let's select the customer name. It wasn't automatically filled while I did new estimate on that customer, but okay. Estimate date, it's taking today's date. Expiration date, let's say it had 30 day. Estimate 001. We can set up our number that is auto incrementing. So we can start from a higher number. So the customer doesn't know it's our first customer. And let's add the different lines in our estimate. So enter an item. We have React development, one day of consulting. Let's say for its website, it is five days. So the total is automatically calculated to 5,000. Then we need to add hosting. So website hosting, we have one year of website hosting. Perfect. And we have the total calculated here. Let's say we want to add a 10% discount because it's a customer we really appreciate working with and been working with for years. We can add it and the total is calculated. Here we can add some customer notes and terms and conditions. We can easily edit it. You can change them by estimate, but in the global settings, we have the possibility to create the default ones for each one. Let's click on save and deliver. Open it. So now we are in our estimates list. We are on that estimate we just created. We have the choice to send it by email. By default, we have a message, the subject, everything is filled, but we can adjust it to that specific customer. Here, very important, keep the attach estimate here and let's hit send. Then if your customer is taking some time to reply to you, you can also notify it via SMS. And when you have an answer, you can mark it as approved or as rejected. Let's mark it as approved. Click on approved. And now it has been approved, but it doesn't automatically create an invoice for it. When you want to create the invoice, right click on it and convert to invoice. Almost the same look than the new estimate, but this time it will create the invoice. So it's important that everything is correct. Once you're good, save and deliver. 
and you have the invoice inside your invoice list with the total amount and when it is due. But currently the tax rate is at 0%, which is wrong. So let's go to financial and open the tax rate settings. So by default, you have different one configured. Sales tax on imports, tax exempt, which I guess will stay at zero. But tax on purchases and tax on sales depends on your country and where you are doing it. If it's a local business or if it's international, you would need to create more one, one per country. Let's change our tax on sales. And let's say we are at 20%. Hit submit, but we need to understand that updating the tax will mark it inactive. So, okay, now we need to go to it and activate it. So now it works. Now let's go back to our home page, go to sales invoice, go to this one, and we didn't set any tax rate. So go to edit invoice, attach the tax rate, which is tax on sales and automatically it will be calculated correctly. So again, tax on sales, and you have the total amount with the taxes. Now let's hit save, and the amount is correctly updated. Now we have made our first invoice. Let's go to financial and accounts chart. Here it is very precise and well organized, which means if you set it up correctly, you could highly simplify your process of accounting. We can see so far we have 5,000 of sales of service income and accounts receivable is 6,000 because the taxes is not something that we will get. It will go to our state. You can see our bank account is at zero. Let's say that our customer paid us for that invoice. To do this, we can go to cash flow. We can have the list of our different bank accounts. We have one bank account created by default, a saving bank account and deposit found and petty cash. We can remove the default one and create ours, but let's keep the default one, bank account, add money in, and we can make it manually. But instead, what we want to do, going to homepage and sales invoice, on that invoice, we will add a payment. By default, it will fill it with the total amount that should be paid, but if it's different, you can adjust it. Deposit two, you select one of your bank accounts. Let's take this one and make payment. Now the invoice appears at paid because everything has been paid. If we go back to financial accounts chart, we can see our bank account is now correct as 6,000. And our accounts receivable, what we are waiting for is now at zero, which means we are not waiting for an incoming payment. But our business goes in two ways. We are selling things, so we have income, but we also have expenses. So let's go to expenses. This is another list where you can see and add all your expenses. Let's add a new one. Let's say we made it on the same bank account. This one It's not related to a customer. We need to select the expense category. So let's say depreciation expense amount 100 euros. I want to add a description, save and publish. And again, if we go to financials, account chart in the right category, we have that depreciation expense and the balance here is at 100 and the bank account was decreased of 100. When you have everything set up correctly, you can then go to reports, open the balance sheet, but you have a lot of different type of reports you can see and you have a clear overview of how is your business doing. And currently we have a total liabilities and equity at 6,200 euro. To go beyond, you can go to the settings so system preferences, edit your global settings, but it's what we did at the onboarding process to create our organization. If you are not an individual, but working in team, you can add the different users and assign different roles. You can create more roles if you need to with who has access to do what. You can set up the default settings on estimates and invoice, adjusting customer notes and terms and conditions. Same for all type of, of things you create. You can adjust the different currencies that you might use. You can remove the one that you are not using for clarity and adding other ones that are not by default here if you are using them. If you are a big corporation, you can add different branches to split your accounting between those different branches and add the customers to the correct ones. Same for invoices and expense. But because it is a big process, you need to activate the branch features and it has a warning telling you that you won't be able to go back from it and that the current organization will be considered at the head office or primary branch. 
but you still can delete other branches. And then you can set up the different SMS that will be done to notify your customer. So it's the template, but still you can edit them later. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed discovering Big Capital and we'll give it a try. Please hit the like button if you want to help promote this video to other open source software lovers. If you want to compare Big Capital with other free open source tools, we have a video covering another contender named Invoice Ninja, available here.